in the state of our church, the coronavirus, but it brings a greater threat. And that threat is fear. God did not give us this spirit of fear. He did not give this to us. This is the enemy. Satan's greatest point of pride right now, or what he gloats mostly about, is what he's able to affect us with in our minds. The whole world is clenched and, and in this state of panic, anxiety about what's going to happen. And that's also an infection. Just like the virus has a physiological effect, there's a spiritual and there's a psychological effect that's called fear. This is a virus. And I see many people, even though they don't have the physical virus, they're infected with this fear. You see people out shopping and they're masked and they've got gloves and, and all of this and you can't touch them, you give them space. Fear. I mean, Satan gloats, especially when the believers could succumb to this. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us options. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. That means that fear did not come from God. God did not give it to us. It is a spirit. It's also a choice. You can choose to be afraid. Or you can choose the power that God gives you over fear. God gives you and I power over the fear. So you cannot have faith and fear at the same time. You either have faith and power over this in a sound mind, or you live in fear and anxiety and worry. But it's a choice. You can choose to not be afraid. God has given you an amazing immune system that whenever a virus or any invader or anything attacks you, your immune system immediately goes on to alert. When a virus enters you, it goes through an incubation period. That means before you have any symptoms, you may have been already affected by it, but you have no, you, know, you feel nothing. The virus is gradually trying to replicate itself to where it starts to attack your immune systems or systems of your body to where you start to feel symptoms. But if you are continually fighting by raising this immune system, by continually bringing heat to the body, by exercising, as soon as this virus comes in, the virus is being destroyed immediately. Every time you exercise, you're fighting every condition that your body will ever be affected by. There's a nutritional component. One of the first things is vitamin C. It's been recorded. Vitamin C is one of the greatest weapons for, for encouraging our body to produce certain uh, blood cells that allows you to fight against that. You have a pH. Your body is either acidic, your body is alkaline. You want your body to be more alkaline. Most diseases, most viruses, most cancers, most conditions dwell more in an acidic environment. So when your body is acidic, your body is now open and prone to whatever is out there. So you want to make your body as alkaline as possible. And the greatest way you do this is partly through your diet. Exercise, diet, those things gradually shift your body toward alkalinity. When your body is alkaline, everything is stronger. When a person is acidic, it's usually because of a diet. Your diet is the first thing that causes acidity. All of the bad foods that we eat, uh, the high fructose corn syrup, the artificial sweeteners, the artificial flavors, the artificial colors, the preservatives, the high fat foods, the highly processed foods, the foods that we like, in other words. <laughs> They make us acidic. And as you become more acidic, your body's more prone. But you start getting away from those things, the sodas, the, all the beverages, even too much coffee, start drinking more water. Your body starts shifting toward alkalinity and you become more healthy. Stop listening to the media. There's so much contradiction. You're listening to this over here and something else saying here. Someone else has got the fear of God in you because you're thinking, oh, it's outside my door. I can't go outside now. And then another say, oh, it's not that. Just trust what God is telling you. Build yourself up through the word of God. What does the word say? Whenever you have anything, the, the Bible has already given you an, an antidote, a word against every condition that you could ever face. God has already given you the word. He's spoken to you the word. What do you do in these times? He told you about what to think about. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Philippians 4 and 8. Think on these things. Whatever things are true and right and good and of good report. 
whatever is praiseworthy. Dwell on those things. In other words, fill your mind with things that are above and not things that are beneath. Things that are eternal and not things that are temporal. I promise you this will pass. Whatever we're in right now, it will pass. But as you're going through the storm, hold your head high. Keep your faith up. Know that you already have the victory. You don't, you don't shout after you get through this. You shout during this thing. That's what we do. You have greatest opportunity to build your faith and to grow into who God wants you to be is right now. If they're going to talk down, you start talking up. They want to talk about how bad things are. You tell them, but God has a plan. And ultimately, God's plan means that we prevail. This virus cannot win. It has no power. It's under God's authority. And if you're under God's authority, you know that no weapon forged against you shall ever prosper. Coronavirus has a name. Any illness has a name. But there's a name above every name. Right? And this is what the scripture says. At that name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. See, when you you have a choice, call out the name of Jesus. That's the greatest name. That's That's your authority right there. The name of Jesus. When you don't know what else to say, say the name. Just say the name of Jesus. Let me hear you say Jesus. Jesus. One more time, Jesus. Jesus. Now give him a big round of praise. That's right, that's right. You can't take God out of anything. If God was taken out, we would cease to exist. So people can try to take God out of things, but you would hope that God is still in this. Because the only way we're going to get through this is the power of God bringing us through. It won't be because we've got a good drug out there or because we've got something else we can do. It's because God ultimately gets the glory. If your immune system is strong and you're doing what you should do, you're eating the right things, you're exercising, and you're drinking your water, you have vitamin C, you're taking supplements, you're doing some things to really build up your body and make it strong, that's your first line of attack. The body will, I mean, the virus is like any other predator. It looks for those that are weak. If you're strong and you're secure and you're suited up, he'll find somebody else. That's why we put on what? The whole armor of God, right? Any predator hates God's word. It hates you to stand in faith and to pray and believe. You can pray with fear, but when you pray a prayer of faith, knowing that God already has provided Your prayer during this time should be prayers of thanksgiving. God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you because you're able. I thank you for bringing us through this. I thank you for the victory. Giving God glory for what you already know he has done. Not that God, I hope that you will do. God already has done it. See, God's already way ahead. He's already established the end at the beginning. So we're just thanking God for the end because we know that the end is good. God, I thank you for allowing us to go through this situation. I thank you that we're past this. I thank you, God, that, that uh, better days are coming. I thank you that you're going to turn everything around. And then you pray for those who are weary and weak, for those who are compromised and those who are in fear. Pray for them because they're struggling more than you'd ever imagine. But the ones out there who don't know the Lord, this is your best time, the best opportunity for you to let them know him through you. And the way you do that is not saying what the world is saying, not crouching in fear, not having doubt, not going out with with this, you know, feeling like you can't go out into the world. God gives us the world right now, and the world needs to see us standing tall and giving him the glory. You don't have to crouch and be afraid. You go through it. It happens to everybody. You get up and you keep going. Let me share a perspective. This is a perspective about a virus. This is my perspective, not yours. Two options that we have. Let's say we quarantine ourselves, and ultimately the virus is gone. We've quarantined. We stayed in here. Everybody's good. Everybody's clean. It's gone. We go back out there. What happens? If we meet somebody who wasn't quarantined, a someone comes in from another place that didn't go quarantine, and they come back, and what happens now? Who's affected again? 
we are affected again. Because we were quarantined and we controlled it, we're good, but we can't control everybody else in the world. So how do we, have, how do we face an enemy that ultimately we can't avoid? Because quarantining means I'm trying to avoid this and hoping that it, okay, everybody's clean, it goes away. But if someone out there who wasn't quarantined, they get on a plane, they come back into the country, we visit another country, a missionary team goes somewhere, we come back, the cycle repeats itself. So how do you face an enemy? You go to it. You go right to it. If we just did nothing but just kept going and we continue with life as we do it, some would get affected, yes, but would run its course and it'll be gone. But if we quarantine ourselves, we're good, and it comes again, we quarantine again, and now we're constantly having to go through the same thing because we never face the enemy. At some point, we have to confront. We can't face down, we can't cower in fear of what something could happen, what could happen. Because if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I heard a perspective recently from someone who says, what's the worst that could happen is we die. The worst thing that can happen is we die. If we die, we get to see Jesus. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's no fear. What, what, what are you afraid of? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> nobody wants to die. So that's the ultimate fear is that you could die. You just don't sh stop and give the enemy an opportunity for you to for Satan to win. And his win, ultimately you know he loses every time, he always loses. His only victory is what he does to us in the process of him losing. How much victory does he gain of each one of us as he's losing? Because he will lose. He loses. But how much do we lose in the process of the win? When we're struggling with identity during difficult times, we have to remember that we are not our own. This is not our battle. The battle is always whose? The Lord's. We're not, this is not our battle. This is not ours. This is God's. And when you're God's and he fights for you, he's fighting the battle. So we can be at peace knowing that God already has the victory. You want victory. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, uh, do you not know that your body Look, you and I is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a great price, the Bible says. You were bought at a great price. The church is not the building. It's not the real estate. It's not the location. The church is the, the believers. Everyone in here makes the church. When we leave out of here and we close these doors, the church just left. If we went to another spot, the church just went to that location. So you don't have to worry about bringing people to the church. Let's take the church to the people. Amen. When you go out there into the world and you know who you are and whose you are, you're the church to someone. You're the Bible that they read. You're the witness that they need. Your voice carries. They need to know and hear from you your word. I'm telling you, the world right now is hungry, it's thirsty. There's never been a more prime time for them to hear who Jesus is. No greater time for them to have words of peace and comfort. Let them know that God's in control of it all. And offer them an opportunity to receive him as their personal Lord and Savior. Let's have faith through this, amen?